Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Welcome to the ongoing discussion. Man created in the image of God and his likeness. In the ongoing discussion, understanding the supernatural, we are going to talk about mankind having been created in the image of God and his likeness. Well, from the beginning of time and before the fall of humanity, mankind was created perfect and without sin. God created mankind in the spirits. God formed and made mankind in the flesh from the dust of the ground. Therefore, we see mankind was created in the spirit. He was also formed and made in God's image and likeness. God created man. He formed and made mankind in God's image and likeness. Man was created in the spirit. Man was also formed in the flesh. Therefore, we need to see that man designed to live both in the natural, he was created, and also to live he was man designed to live in the spirit he was created and also man designed to live in the natural in the flesh he was formed from the dust of the ground we have had this question from the someone talking about how was man created in the image of God and his likeness? And mankind. How was mankind made in the image of God? What does this mean? Well, as we have already mentioned, man was created in God's image, as the Bible says in the book of Genesis 1. And also in the book of Psalms, man was created perfect. He was fearfully and wonderfully made. Man was created to have communion with God. Man was created to have relationship, to have a spiritual union with God, his maker. Man was also created to have fellowship with God. And that's why we need to understand that having communion with God, because we are God's children, we have that relationship, the child-father relationship. We also have to have fellowship with God. Therefore, having communion with God having a relationship, spiritual union with God, our maker, and have also having fellowship with God. Man was therefore designed with free will. Mankind was to choose to listen, to hear God's voice, to agree with God, or to obey God's voice, to walk with God, to walk according to God's word, and to be willing to be led by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, this is a spiritual walk with God not a physical, not in the natural, because walking and being led by the Holy Spirit is not something in the natural, but it's a spiritual 
walk. The Holy Spirit dwells inside a person's spiritual heart and he can guide someone the way they need to live. If it's a bad way, the Holy Spirit will warn someone if they are listening to his voice. And when someone hears God's voice speaking through the Holy Spirit in the supernatural, they need to obey what the Holy Spirit is saying according to the Word of God because the Holy Spirit is the author of the Word of God. Therefore, when we're talking of the man hearing God's voice, agreeing with God or obeying God's voice, walking with God and according to God's word and willing to be led by and the guiding of his spirit, the Holy Spirit. This is a spiritual walk with God, a walking a spiritual walk with God simply means living according to God's word and being led by the Holy Spirit. Being a hearer of God's word and a doer of the word of God is the only way someone can walk according to God's word. The way God wants us to live is the only way this is the only way that man can conform to God's word. Obedience to God's word and instructions or God's laws or God's commands was the only requirement that mankind was to meet, to be a hearer and a doer of the word of God. But as we learn, from the Holy Scriptures that in the beginning, the first Adam, the first mankind in God's creation, the first Adam disobeyed God's command or law. We understand how things work in the natural world where mankind has made their own laws and regulations that must be followed and adhere to. Any person that breaks or contravenes any of these laws that have been given, put in place by the government or the people in authority, anyone can be taken to court and face judgment. And if one is found guilty they face the consequences. Everyone knows this to be true, and therefore, most people, if not all, always seek to avoid being brought before the law courts or before a judge for fear of condemnation. By observing the laid down rules or laws, people are kept safe and in case one is falsely accused and they appear before a just judge, they will be found not guilty, and therefore they will not be condemned. That is in the natural. In the spiritual, too, God has given his laws, his commands that need to be followed. God has said there is judgment and the judge is God who is the just judge. God too has his laws and has given to mankind his word which is his law and anyone who does not follow the word of God will one day 
be judged by the same word they have neglected. So when God has given his word, someone needs to hear the word and be the doer of the word, to obey the word. And when it comes to that time of judgment, even if they are accused falsely, the word of God, as the word of God says, God being the just judge, those who are being accused, they will not be condemned. Anyone who does not follow the word of God will one day be judged by the same word they have neglected. There will be a day in the near future when all mankind that ever existed will appear before the Lord our God who is the just judge and every person will then be questioned. Every person will be weighed on God's just scale. His word. God's word is a just scale. Where someone, when they are weighed on that just scale, they'll be found wanting or not wanting. As we have said, there will be a day, the day of judgment when all mankind will appear before the Lord our God and every person will then be questioned, weighed on God's just scale and they will go through judgment, whether good or bad. If someone is found blameless, they will then receive their reward for eternal life with God in heaven. And if found guilty, one shall be given their reward for eternal condemnation, eternal separation from the Lord, and they will be cast into the place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is in hellfire. That's not something that a person, when they hear God's voice, they should ignore or reject the gift of salvation, the free gift of eternal life that mankind has already been provided for through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why we need to repent today, turn away from our wicked ways, seek the face of the Lord and prepare for the soon return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is the eternal life. Therefore, as we are talking this, this is real. The time for each one of us to put our house in order is now, not tomorrow, because we don't know for how long we are going to exist. Let's therefore receive the gospel message of truth, the message that is being shared in these last days when there's so much knowledge, technology increase and people have access to the internet and all this technology that is all over the world, that people not have an excuse that they do not hear, they do not have access. As we ask the Lord to help us at this moment, we need to understand that the gospel of salvation is being shared. As Jesus said, go out to the whole world and share this gospel, the good news about man's salvation. That's what we are sharing right now. Whoever shall receive the message of truth, they will become saved, accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, becoming born again and no longer condemned in sin, but they have been saved. They have come out of the death. They no longer 
are condemned, but they are living in hope in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore receive the gospel message of truth, believe and receive the free gift of salvation in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the last Adam. Through his obedience, God has granted mankind the last chance to go back to him. Whoever believes in Jesus Christ, his death, his burial and resurrection, and by surrendering our life to him, we will be saved and not face condemnation on that day of judgment that is coming soon. God instructed the first Adam, the first mankind, not to eat fruit from the forbidden tree. That was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But the first mankind, the first Adam, disobeyed God's command. Let no one be deceived as the first mankind was deceived and he went into disobedience. He went against God's important instruction. The first Adam's disobedience led to all mankind falling into sin and condemnation, leading to the curse of sin and death, and this is separation from God. But there is redemption and restoration that has come through the salvation that is only available in Christ Jesus, the last Adam. As Jesus said in the book of John chapter 3, Jesus said, And unless a person is born again, he cannot have eternal life. Eternal life is in the Son of Man, who was lifted up on the tree. Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, was lifted up on the tree, and whoever shall believe in him, they no longer be condemned, but they will be saved. And unless someone looks unto the Son of Man on the tree and believe in him, they will remain condemned. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life, abundant life. Amen. Therefore, people need to seek everlasting life, eternal life, not the natural temporary life. People currently going through COVID-19 at this time when people are being deceived. People want to save their bodies, the temporary bodies, but they are not willing to have their souls saved. We are living in the last days. People are being warned, even through the COVID-19. People dying, whether even if someone dies, if they are in Christ Jesus, they already have eternal life, everlasting life in Christ Jesus. But those people who think that by believing only in what men have instructed them, following whatever, distancing, lockdown, things like that, wearing face masks, and if they protect their body for how long, people need to ask themselves, for how long? When we know that at some point in time, every person will die. So unless someone is born again, someone is saved, and they are in Christ Jesus, and they are having eternal life in Christ Jesus, and if they die in this natural body, they will, in the end, receive a glorified body. Therefore, People need to understand what they need to do to believe in 
what God has said. To trust in God's word, because God has said, whoever that shall believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and resurrection, they shall have everlasting life. They shall have eternal life. They shall have abundant life. And people don't believe in the word of God. But when they die, they don't know where they'll go, whether they'll go to heaven or they'll go to hell. Therefore, people need to be born again. We thank you for joining us in the ongoing discussion. We are going for a short break and we'll be back shortly to continue talking about a man becoming born again, understanding the supernatural, what it means a man becoming born again, a man becoming born again. We are having this discussion talking about understanding the supernatural, mankind becoming born again. What does it mean, person becoming born again? Is a blessed and shallow.